What's happening, everybody? Brent Dax here from Syracuse.com, and we are live here on the Syracuse.com Syracuse Basketball Facebook page, coming off the heels of Jim Beheim's press conference after an orange loss to Notre Dame, 51 to 49 at the Carrier Dome. A stunning loss for Syracuse in the sense of how the game ended in the sudden way that it did. Not so stunning in how the way Syracuse played in this game against the Irish at the Carrier Dome. A tough, tough loss for Syracuse. A bad loss for the Orange. And things do not get easier going ahead here as they visit Virginia on Tuesday night. Jim Beheim just called them the best defensive team in the country at his uh, post-game press conference following this loss, and I don't think he's uh, far off in describing it there. And then Syracuse has to play at Florida State after that, a team that recently beat North Carolina and has shown to be one of the better teams in the ACC. So to quote the great Yogi Berra, it's getting late early for Syracuse in ACC play. So we've got plenty to go over here. Please like and share this post. Let people know that we're doing this. Right now, there will be a replay available later. I always put it in my recap, which you can find on Syracuse.com the day after the game. So on Sunday morning, you can find a recap of this and, of course, on our Syracuse.com video page as well. I want to thank our friends at the Bill Rapp Superstore for helping us out as well, being a sponsor of our Facebook Lives and our Syracuse Sports Podcast as well, which you can download on iTunes and listen and get uh, subscribe and get uh, delivered right to your phone and your iPad weekly. Well. It says it right there in the comments, and it is truly a terrible loss for Syracuse. Jim Beheim just said it at his postgame press conference, and it's as simple as this, folks. This team's got a problem. This Syracuse basketball team is, how can we say this, offensively challenged. And I think we knew that things were limited there on the offensive end for the Orange, but it really, really reared its ugly head today for the Orange in a 51-49 to loss to Notre Dame. So much to go over, so let's just jump right in here. Last play, you know, Tyus Battle lets the clock wind down. And I think even though this is a team that has not been the best in the offensive uh, half court this year, and Jim Beheim typically does not call timeout in these situations, he didn't call timeout. And the clock was winding down and winding down. And it, that's who you want with the ball in his hands. You want Tyus Battle to have the ball in his hands in that situation and he just dropped the ball. Now, that happens. It's a mistake. But the thing that really has to bother a Syracuse fan, and I'm sure there'll be some comments about this in the locker room afterwards, and, you know, you hate to dog a player or two here, but, boy, Frank Howard and Merrick Dolzhai didn't exactly bust their hump up the court on the other end. They were kind of waiting for the trailer, just kind of stopped at midcourt, and it allowed Fluger to get that, you know, two or three efforts at the bucket And Notre Dame slips one in there, and all of a sudden, they're walking away with a game that Syracuse really just had to kind of ugly their way to victory. This is how Syracuse is going to win games. They're not a good offensive team, but they held the lead for most of this game. They were doing enough on offense because what an extraordinary thing we saw from Notre Dame in this game. So Notre Dame out-rebounds Syracuse 42-27 to overall, which is a problem in and of itself because Syracuse has been a team that has leaned on rebounding all year. But the last two games, both losses to Wake Forest and Notre Dame, that rebounding edge has gone away. Wake Forest out-rebounded Syracuse 38-29. And not only did Notre Dame out-rebound Syracuse today 42-27, to they picked up 21 offensive rebounds today. 21-8 to eight on the offensive glass. That is incredible. But here's the thing. As you guys saw if you watched the game, They didn't capitalize on it. These were two teams that combined to shoot. Okay, these are unofficial stats after the game. 18 of 46 and 17 of 56. Both teams struggled on the offensive end. Time after time after time, Notre Dame was getting offensive rebounds, but we're not converting them. But Syracuse, just throughout the game, couldn't convert themselves on the offensive end. So this is tough. Because Syracuse goes to Virginia on Tuesday. They go to Florida State after that. Those are two big ACC games. As you know, coming into this one, look, you've got to take advantage of every opportunity that comes your way. Matt Farrell and Bonzi Colson were not on the floor today 
for Notre Dame. This was an opportunity for Syracuse, biggest crowd of the year, and the crowd never really had an opportunity to get into this game because it was such an awful basketball game to watch on both ends, frankly, offensive, defensive end. I mean, you know, this thing went to halftime. What was the score at halftime? 28 to 19. And you're like, what are we watching here? We knew that Syracuse struggled on the offensive end. But to be fair to Notre Dame, they didn't have their point guard. They didn't have Matt Farrell. They didn't have Colson. So they're trying to figure out who's going to do what for Notre Dame. But Syracuse just had to hold on. They just had to find a way to kind of grind this one out. And you just saw it. It was like Chinese water torture. Slowly but surely over the second half, the Irish were cutting back into it, cutting back into it, cutting back into it. You know, Syracuse had a pretty significant lead. In, in this game at times, but the Irish just kept clawing away. It's a credit to them. It's a credit to how Notre Dame played this game and got back into it. I want to check the score here for the second half. So this game went into halftime, 28 to 19. Notre Dame outscores Syracuse, 32 to 21. And and here's kind of the bummer in this whole thing. In that, as bad as this game was overall offensively, and let me uh, check the stats here officially just to to put it out there. This is a Syracuse team that has struggled from the three-point line this year, right? Well, they were 8 for 18 today from three-point range, range, which is 44%, you know, a nice number for Syracuse, you would think, normally, right? Notre Dame was 5 of 21 from three-point range. That's awful. This is a great perimeter shooting team, but they just struggled throughout the day offensively, but just kept chipping away, particularly on the rebounding end. And, you know, the Syracuse defense that we've heard a lot about this year, that their main problem was giving up threes. You know, Syracuse's big issue this year was giving up threes, and they couldn't shoot threes themselves. That wasn't the case today. What they've leaned on all year round did not work for them today. Look, Tyus Battle, I feel bad for him in that last play and letting the clock wind down. He ended up with 21 points tonight. So your best player bounced back. You need your best player to be your best player to win a game like this. And for the most part, Tyus Battle was Syracuse's best player. Frank Howard struggled on the offensive end and we mentioned boy that last play I'm sure some of you have seen a replay of it by now if you're watching live or will have seen it if you watch this later on the replay that trailing defense at the end that's disappointing and to see by the way and you know he has been somebody who has hustled his butt off all year for Syracuse it's hard to fault him but Merrick Dolzhai too was like they just kind of said okay we're not going to catch those guys so, look, Jim Beheim said it in his press conference. You guys are saying it in the comments here. This team's got a problem, and it's not a problem that you can just kind of snap a finger and fix. You know, this is January. There's a lot of basketball to be played here, but it seems that Syracuse has taken a turn for the worse since they've gotten to ACC play as opposed to, you know, improving and kind of finding themselves as a team here. Let's see a little bit of what you guys are saying in the comments. Uh, I I can imagine uh, how fired up you guys are. Richard says out rebounded. We cannot score consistently. This team can't score at all. It's a challenged offensive team and Bayheim knows it. He said it at the presser. We have a problem. This is a team that only has three players really that you can count on in the offensive end. And it's sporadic. You know, O'Shea Brissett was interesting today. Let me pull up his numbers while we're talking about O'Shea. He had a double-double, 10 points, 11 rebounds, and he's been averaging just about a double-double, and that's where you want him to be. Three for 15 shooting the ball, though. All three of those shots that he made were three-pointers. We mentioned Frank Howard, who was great last game, has been this team's most consistent three-point shooter and has been a player that could score. But today, just 10 points, four turnovers, four assists. We mentioned the defensive play at the end, which was just disappointing to see that. So, look, those are your big three on the offensive end, Battle Brissette, Battle Brissette, pardon me, and Frank Howard. And only one of those guys was really as good as they needed to be. Again, look, O'Shea did this in the last game. You look at his numbers and you're like, oh, he had 16 points. But then you look at his shooting numbers. He was 5 of 16 last game. Is 3 of 12 today. Yes, he hit a few threes in this game. So he does just enough to kind of straddle that line. But he's 3 for 12 overall. So beyond those three, you know, you didn't get any help that you needed on the offensive end from Americ Dolzhai. Howard Washington got a little burned today, but turned the ball over, and we didn't see him again. Barama Sidibe, uh, Sidibe, pardon me, gets into this game and scores a little bit inside. But you didn't get Matthew Moyer, who has been just so up and down this year, and he is in Bayheim's doghouse. So he makes a mistake. He gets pulled early, and sometimes, you know, 
you, you don't see him again. It's almost like he should go to the locker room and get his warm-up suit back on. He only plays eight minutes today. So he didn't provide that offensive backup that the Orange needed today. What else we got going on in the comments here? 21 offensive rebounds. I know, Richard. It's, it's incredible. Notre Dame, now here's – they got that many offensive rebounds because they're normally a good shooting team. Pretty good from the perimeter. But, again, you don't have Colson, You don't have Farrell. They're adjusting. But the fact that they got 21 offensive rebounds and didn't just blow Syracuse out of the water here is incredible that this was a game. You'd almost rather it get blown out, right? You'd almost rather lose by 10, 15 points knowing you were not the better team in that category as opposed to the biting leg that the Orange lost today. Uh, Richard adding, a no movement on offense, too much one-on-one. Yeah, that's been a problem all year. I'm not sure why that hasn't improved. And, you know, I think you've got Battle and Frank Howard, and particularly a few times today, O'Shea Brissett was firing up shots. And I think this team has a mentality that they feel like, if I'm the guy, I'm the guy, and I'm going to go on a little run here. But there were times in this game when they had nice ball movement, they set up big plays. There was a great three-pointer that Frank Howard hit from the top of the key that came as a result of great ball movement. Howard, you know, again, we were dogging him for that play at the end, but he had a couple of great dribble drives as Syracuse was coming down the stretch, dishing off to Barama, you know, down low. He can do it. I think that's what's frustrating is you kind of can see a player do it and be capable of this, but generally ball movement is just not in this team's category. Somebody asked Jim Beheim about this, not this game, but after the Wake Forest game, and they said, well, he only had nine assists tonight. And Beheim said, well, you know, we don't, we don't pass the ball. We're just dribble drive type of team. And it was, I was like, is he kidding? Is he half kidding? Is he serious? Does he encourage that? But, you know, it's, it, it's January here. And while you can make some improvements as you go along, the way this team is going to win, is by getting on the glass, by toughing things out, by slowing games down. This is clearly an offensively challenged team. Maybe they'll break out of their shell a little bit here, but that's what's telling in the last two games is they were great on the boards in non-conference play, but once you kind of step it up and get some better competition, by the way, not only did you lose this game with Notre Dame not having their two best players, let's not forget Wake Forest didn't have their best player for most of that game. So Syracuse has been handed opportunities here, and Look, if you want to make the NCAA tournament, you got to pile up those ACC games that you need to get, and that's happened twice. Now, I guess the good news in all this is that the Wake Forest loss was six, uh, 73-67. This was 51-49. They're not getting blown out yet. I think when Syracuse plays Virginia and plays Florida State and plays Notre Dame or, or plays North Carolina, played Notre Dame today, of course, that could be a possibility. If you can't score, if you can't shoot, and you can't get any offensive rhythm here. There's only so many games you can kind of throw a monkey wrench into the situation and hope that you drag teams kind of down to your level. Look, I'm going to say this. I hope uh, this doesn't turn into a hot take that comes back to bite me here. I don't want to be right about this, but, you know, you got to call it like it is. This could turn out to be the worst offensive team that I've seen, that I've seen as a someone who grew up in Syracuse and went to games as – you know, a kid and as a fan before I got into media and became, you know, a professional, if you will, any way you slice it. If they keep on this pace, this could be one of the worst offensive teams I've seen. And and that's incredible to think about. When, you know, you think of Syracuse teams through the years, you always think of those high-flying teams and big scores. And, you know, there's a number of reasons why this team is, is short on bodies. Torian Thompson left. Geno Thorpe left the team this year. How about Jordan Tucker? Just to throw that out for conversation. I'm sure some of you guys saw this, but if you didn't, uh, Jordan Tucker goes to Duke over Syracuse, gets to Duke. Clearly, he's not in Mike Krzyzewski's plans this year, so he's going to transfer. He visited Georgetown the other day. Oh, come on. What are you doing there? But can you imagine that? Can you imagine if you, let's say, you pick Duke over Syracuse, then you end up at Georgetown. I mean, he, he, you can't write this stuff any better than that. But he'd surely be playing on this team. There's just been a couple of misfires, a couple of things that just came up short on the recruiting end, players leaving the team, obviously players leaving early, but that's part of college basketball. And it all adds up to a team that is – offensively challenged, and, and that's just putting it nicely at this point. Uh, Joe mentions in the comments here, why not press to pick the pace up? I completely agree with that because the press, I think, is best 
for Syracuse when it's just in kind of a two or three minute spurt. And Jim Beheim doesn't like to go to the press unless absolutely necessary. And let's remember, Syracuse led most of the second half. But what the press can do is it can spark a team and it can get you some possessions and it can throw things off. I think the reason why was Notre Dame wasn't playing well offensively, despite the mammoth lead that they had on offensive rebounds. You know, it's not like they had an eight or a 10 point lead, but had they done it, uh, I certainly would not uh, have been against it. I think that's, uh, you know, a fair point that Joe makes in the comments. Michael says they need a young coach with a new offense. No wonder players are leaving this team or not wanting to come here. Very disappointing. Okay, but you also have to look at what's coming in, Michael. You have Darius Basley coming in next year, who is a top 10 recruit, one of the highest rated recruits Syracuse has had since Carmelo Anthony. You have uh, Jalen Carey coming in next year, who's a four-star prospect. I wrote a story about him this week on Syracuse.com. He did an interview with Scout and or I think it was 247 Sports, actually, and he said that, you know, he thinks that, and all players, you know, talk like this and, and you know, think big, but he thinks that he and Basley and Buddy Beheim, of course, who comes in next year, can really, you know, I mean, he said it. He wants to be a one-and-done player. He says the coaches have told him he's capable of being a one-and-done player, and he thinks that Syracuse, you know, can go far. And that's an offensive infusion that Syracuse needs coming in next year. Buddy Bayheim can shoot the ball. Syracuse does not have a great three-point shooter consistently. Frank's been good as of late. He was 17 of 31 coming into this game tonight, and let's see how Frank ended up on the three-point line tonight, 2 of 4. So he's what, hit 19 of his last 33. Somebody checked my math on that there. But you need two or three options from the three, and sometimes Ty's battle can be that. He was tonight. Sometimes he can't be. He wasn't the other night, one of seven against Wake Forest. But you need two, three, four players that are capable of shooting the ball, and Syracuse will have that next year. So to say that this coaching staff and Beheim being back can't relate to young players, young coach, that's not necessarily true when you look at the recruiting that's coming in. And I think that would be the biggest alarm bell. Are you starting to lose players? Are you starting to back off on the recruiting line? And that's just not the case. Yet you lost Tucker. And Torian Thompson transferred, and there's still players that, you know, arrived here, and Geno Thorpe left and just didn't see a role there. I wonder how much of a a role Geno would be playing right now. Just to give Syracuse another guy off the bench, another spark. He's a decent three-point shooter. And we still haven't really heard what happened there. I mean, you can't play what if. You can't what if it to death because he's gone. He's not coming back, and it's just not worth discussing at length. But this is a team that's down. To, I mean, technically they have eight scholarship players, but Howard Washington doesn't play that much. Barama played 10 minutes tonight, but he's still limited with the knee situation and everything going on there. So you're basically playing six and a half guys on this team, and that's not enough. That's not enough on an offensively challenged team. So a couple other things here as, you know, we look at this game. We mentioned that, you know, Merrick Dolgei struggled, but he played 32 minutes. And he struggled in the last game, didn't even play much in the second half last game. So that's Uh, You know, a real kick that Syracuse needs. And every player has stretches where they struggle like this. But he has been such a big energy guy off the bench. But what were we all concerned about coming into league play? He's too skinny. He's going to get pushed around out there. It Clearly, we're seeing an adjustment for Merrick Dolzhai in ACC play. He's seeing players that are bigger than him and are pushing him around. And he can't really get around and, and hustle and get to those rebounds and make the plays. He struggled shooting the ball tonight as well as he did a non-conference play. So we'll see how long it takes him to make that adjustment now that the Orange is an ACC play here. Uh, we mentioned Brahma got in for 10 minutes. Matthew Moyer only played eight minutes in this game. Pascal Chukwu, we haven't even mentioned Pascal a lot here tonight. Two points, three rebounds in this game. And it's it's so up and down for Pascal, who added four blocks. He did come through on the defensive end, but he got into foul trouble once again. So Pascal plays 29 minutes in this game, but even as – as ineffective as Barama is right now as he works his way back in, today was the perfect example of why you just need Barama to come in and spell Pascal if he's in foul trouble, which he got into in the second half, or he's struggling. So we saw a little bit of that in this game. But look, bottom line, pick your cliche. It's gut check time. It's, you know, uh, I can't even think of one at this point right now. But there's a lot of things that Syracuse – as soul-searching was was the term I was trying to come up with there, but there's a lot of things 
uh, the Orange have to do to correct what went wrong in this game, a game that they had most of the way, but got outscored in the second half, 32 to 21, ultimately lose 51 to 49. Play at the end, Tyus Battle had a shot, was waiting for it, just let the ball slip out of his hands. Syracuse doesn't pursue as much as they should have on the defensive end, and they let one go. This is this was a big opportunity for Syracuse to win this this game, get a good ACC win in your back pocket. Yep, Notre Dame didn't have their best two players, but you know, don't cry for me, Argentina. You got to win these type of games, and Syracuse let it slip, and now you got two of your toughest ACC opponents up ahead on the road. Other than that, how was the play, Mrs. Lincoln? Going to be a tough stretch ahead for the Orange. So thanks for uh, coming by here on Facebook Live. We'll be doing this after every ACC game. We'll be back here Tuesday night after the Orange take on Virginia. Hope you're staying warm wherever you are. It's currently uh, two degrees where I am here in Syracuse, New York. Got to love it. What is this thing, the bomb cyclone? Oh, man, but uh, relief is in sight. I saw a high of 45 degrees heat wave coming to Syracuse next week. So hope you're staying warm where you are. Hope everybody's enjoying your weekend despite the uh, loss by the Orange today. And we'll be back Tuesday night to do this all again. Please check out my recap on Syracuse.com, all our great coverage on Syracuse.com and everything that uh, Mike Waters and Donna DeToda and Chris Carlson and the crew had to say about this one and what the players had to say in the locker room. Much more coverage here on Syracuse.com. Thanks to our friends at the Bill Rapp Superstore for sponsoring this little Facebook Live thing that we do and our Syracuse Sports Podcast. You can download that on iTunes, weekly podcast that I do with a lot of guests. This week's was a conversation with Matthew Fairburn previewing the Bills and the Jaguars. And now that we're moving past the Syracuse game, honed in, man, 100% all in. Let's see if the Bills can make up for the Syracuse loss tomorrow. Let's go Buffalo beat those Jaguars tomorrow in the NFL playoffs. Thanks for tuning in here on Facebook Live. We'll be back Tuesday night after the Orange take on Virginia.